So <laughs> one of my favorite like assessments of Jim Holden comes right at the top of um right at the top of the of the finale like you know Avasarala just kind of looks at him it's just like you're such a fucking optimist like how have you how have you survived this long <laughs> like and in a lot of ways like she's not she's not wrong like there is he, in a world full of uh solar system full of of uh cynicism like you've got the one like idealist through and through even on the Rossi is Holden like how is it kind of like maintaining that as the expanse becomes really a wartime show for its last couple seasons. It was, um, it was really wonderful to be able to have Holden kind of mature into a, a more complex version of that. You know, I think his idealism never leaves him, you know, his, his moral core is, is always his guiding light. It's the thing that anchors him um, while the weight of, the system is literally on his shoulders all of these years, but his his views on it grow over more confident with how uh, he handles that kind of idealism and stress. And um, I think, you know, interestingly enough, I think his experiences through the years, you know, whether it is connecting, you know, a circuit that you know allows him to communicate with this other race or or even in the darker moments where he had to blow up a ship full of doctors to prevent a to prevent a pandemic, you yeah. know, this has been a really hard journey for Holden, and um, it's not an it hasn't been easy for him. Um, but his his ethics are the only thing that's really held him together, and um, ultimately, it's it's what it's what ends up solving the ultimate issue at the end is that, um, you know, he's someone that everyone can trust because even if he's frustrating to everybody at various times, <laughs> uh, you know where he's coming from. And, you know, he, he ultimately wants what's best for everybody. And um, it does make him a, a unique perspective in the story. Uh, so it was, it was really amazing to be able to play that over the years um, and have that kind of unique arc uh, especially as things get darker and, and more grim in the last couple of seasons. Yeah. I mean, even in season six, there is a noticeable, I mean, his arc. So he's the one that spares Marco like halfway through season six. And by the end, you know, he's had his heart to heart with Amos. He's had his heart to heart with Naomi. And he's like, all right, like if we have to reactivate this ring to take them out, that's what we're just going to have to do. Like, how was it like, what do you think had changed in him in the span of those, just of that season to, to make that decision? Yeah, you know, I think th those, what's interesting is that moment not to kill Marco and Philip um, was one of the two moments I was most looking forward to this whole year. Mm -hmm. um, that and then, and then handing um, the reins over to Drummer uh, at the very end. Um, and I think it's really kind of emblematic of who he is. Um, and, and once again, that how, you know, his, his worldview and decisions evolve, you know, from, from circumstances and moments. You know, I don't think he, he couldn't kill Marco and Philip because he couldn't kill his love's child. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very human moment. It's probably the wrong strategic move um, but, but it, it's who he is. And, you know, the, the, the truth of the matter is, is that he, if he breaks that, he no longer is the guy at the end that everyone can trust, <laughs> you know? So it's like, there, there is, um, there's something deeply kind of, you know, without getting too heady, there's a, there's a very kind of philosophical bent to the, the practicality of, of Holden's, um, worldview of, I'm going to do what I know and feel is right because that's the best I got. And, um, you know, towards the end, it, it becomes a, a matter of, of, of full-blown survival for, for everybody. And, you know, he has had those conversations with, with Naomi, uh, most importantly. And, um, you know, he, he's evolved to a place where it's like, okay, well, you know, there are all kinds of threats here. Um, at this point, 
rolling the dice on waking up the entities is worth it. Um, you know, it, we're, we're between a rock and a hard place. And I think that's where the show really thrives is where there really is no good decision. There's, there's <laughs> only, there's only bad and worse decisions to make. Um, but you know, that's, that's where the drama comes from. I mean, that's why I love the book so much. I was, I've been a fan all these years, um, is, is throwing a character like Holden into those kind of situations. Um, it's, it's an extraordinarily fun as an actor to play uh, because it's it's so complex yeah. uh, and there's all of these different colors uh, to play with. So, uh, well, you know, in terms of that complexity, the um, he's always been the reluctant leader. Like there was a time when he was just hauling ice through space, and by the end of it, he is a wartime general and you know a brief but important in that brief period of time politician. Uh, you know, for that. 30 seconds or so that he's got the position. Um, what is going through, but at the same time, he doesn't really trust ever anybody to make some of those difficult decisions. So even though he knows they're morally compromising to him, but what do you think it is that informs what's going on in Holden's head when he's okay with turning over the reins to the transport union to drummer by the end of that, of the, of the show of the, of the series? I think, you know, through, throughout all of his experiences over, over the seasons, he experiences from every side the, the tribalism that has really paralyzed um, humanity in the face of what he knows is a existential threat. And the balance of power uh, within the system is critically important for, for, uh, for, to make sure another Marco just doesn't happen again. Um, and he knows that Earth and Mars are never going to do that themselves. They, they don't have the political will, even if they know it's right. And, you know, even in that last moment with Ava Sarala, she goes, I, you know, I, I hope you're right. And, and you know that she does, like that it probably was the right move. It's just one she couldn't make. Yeah. It's one that she, because, you know, very early on in the story, you know, every side thinks they're the hero of, of their own story. You know, the Earth thinks they're the hero of their own story. Mars thinks they're the hero of their own story. And so does the belt. And the belt has been under the boot of, of these major powers for its entire existence. And if there's going to be some kind of equanimity, um, they really do need a true seat at the table. It's what, it's what, Hold, it's what Drummer was talking about in the negotiations. And, and Holden agrees with her. You know, he, he knows her. And it's... It's within his best judgment um, and through his experiences, uh, you know, having kind of this unique perspective of being the only person communicating with this other race of beings and also having been, you know, I think his relationship with Fred Johnson over the years was actually really very influential on, on, his, on his worldview. Um, you know, they have that kind of final heart to heart conversation in his office in season five. And he's, you know, Fred's like, build something, build something. You know, it's like, stop worrying about the end of the world and, and build something. And Holden gets his opportunity to build yeah. something. And, um, and he, you know, the, the final moments is, you know, I hope I did the right thing, but that's the best Holden has always had. You know, he's not the hero who's like, I know this is the correct thing. And I know he's always full of doubt and he just has to trust that it's just the best that he's got. He didn't choose to be in the position, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, it's what, it's what he knows how to do. And um, it's what he knows. It's what he, it's what he feels is right. And that's really, it's really the best he can do. Um, so you know, with that said, he knows he knows that the he he's in love with the Belter. He's you know, if you see in the the, the one ship episode with Holden, um, you know, it's it's very kind of it shows you know why Holden even before all this crazy stuff starts happening, before the weight of the world is on his shoulders, he's still someone who connects with everybody. Yeah. And um, and that really is his greatest strength throughout the entire series um, is that, you know, his his goodness is not something that anybody doubts. Um, and, it, and it turns out to be a linchpin in the in the in the end. 
and, and throughout, but especially in the end.